The Sacred Heart Cathedral, also known as the Stone House by locals, is a Gothic Revival Roman Catholic cathedral in Guangzhou, China. It is one of the few cathedrals in the world to be entirely built of granite, including all the walls, pillars, and the twin towers. Since Guangzhou doesn't produce granite, the stones were transported from Kowloon, Hong Kong, by sailing ships. Two foundation stones were blessed and laid in 1863. The words Jerusalem 1863 were engraved on the east side and Roma 1863 on the west side, respectively, of the main entrance to the cathedral. In reference to the church's origin in Jerusalem in the east and evolution in Rome in the west, one kilogram of soil taken from Rome and one stone from Jerusalem were laid under the respective foundation stones. The cathedral was finished in 1888 after 25 years of construction. In the evening, the sun shines through the stained glasses on the west side into the church. The walls are thus dyed with profusion of colors. It is breathtaking. Most of 19th century stained glasses were damaged during wartime and smashed in the Cultural Revolution. The new ones were made in Philippines, so they are all carrying English descriptions instead of Latin and French texts of the original French stained glasses. During my stay in Guangzhou, I visit the stone house every day, sitting at the same place and gazing at the same stained glass, which captures the transfiguration of Jesus based on the Gospel of Mark, chapter nine, verses one to eight. The focus of this stained glass is in no doubt Jesus. The Bible tells us that Jesus was transfigured before his disciples. His clothes were dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. However, the man bearing his whole face in his hands catches my eyes more. Why are the disciples so disturbed? It's because this event makes the identity of Jesus Christ perfectly clear. They now realize that what Jesus has told them will surely become true. Jesus will suffer and die. They are terrified. If even the Son of God will suffer, how can they be spared? In this divided and crooked world, if we want to live out Jesus' teachings and be His disciples, suffering is inevitable. To be honest, witnessing the peaceful marches escalating into bloody conflicts in Hong Kong recently, I am deeply disturbed too. But Jesus' story does not end with his suffering and death. Although he was crucified, he conquered death, the power of darkness, and was resurrected three days later. Jesus' transfiguration wants us, his disciples, to know that suffering is temporary, while God's glory is eternal. May the glory of our heavenly Father shine within us, illuminate the darkest corners of our hearts, heal the wounds, resolve the hatred, help us forgive each other, and grant us strength to bring true peace to our world.